the first shade is tawny wood now this is a brown plus orange terracotta ish orange color uh, this is definitely not nude for my skin tone but i feel like if you are above nc 43 of mac uh, studio fix then definitely this can also work as a nude shade and i feel that this will not suit me without concealer in summers it will make my under eye area look a bit dull and even though i do have a little bit of hyperpigmentation around my lips but with this i don't think i need a lip liner separately okay next shade is nutty latte now this needs to build up you have to go in with three to four coats because it is a tad bit patchy shade and because it is more on the warmer side it's more on the deeper side i feel like you also need a lip liner with this just in case you don't commit any mistakes while applying this shade okay definitely nutty latte will suit all skin tones out there the next shade that we have is flattering nude now this does not look like a nude shade on me and i'm not talking about those pale nudes i am talking about mlbb kind of nudes i really like mlbb kind of nudes mlbb is my lips but better uh, this definitely needs a full face of makeup on my skin tone otherwise the shade uh, dulls my skin so definitely this is something that lighter skin tones can enjoy as their ml baby or nude shade for me it's more on the pinkier side it's it has a little bit of coralness to it not so something that i would wear as it is i will definitely use either a darker corally lip liner or i will uh, do a full face of makeup and a heavy smoky eye look on my eyes and then I feel like it can work as a nude shade. Next shade is Nude Pumps. Now again, this is not a nude shade for me. It's more on the cool tone, mauvier pink side. And I feel like this can be a nude shade for lighter skin tones. Again, this is not patchy. The formula is good. This particular shade is thinner than rest of the shades that I will be talking about moving forward with the video and shades descriptions. But definitely it's not a nude shade for me. It's more of a mauvey pink shade. Next shade is Pink Ballet. Now this is a pink shade which is more on the brighter side. It is patchy on me and it does not suit my skin tone. If I am applying just this as bare skin. But if I apply it with full face of makeup. It is kind of manageable. Again this is not my favorite shade out of the lot. I will talk about my favorite shades for sure. But this is not something that I enjoyed thoroughly while applying. It's also patchy. The formula of this one requires a little bit more effort. Let's talk about that coral pink shade which did suit me with or without makeup which is perfect pink. This is again a nude pink which is more on the corally side. But if I have to describe all the corally pinks uh, that are available in this range this was the best out of the lot. Perfect pink. I will recommend this to light to medium skin tones. If you are tanner than me, I think you will have to apply a darker lip liner, which I think I will also have to do during summers because I get more hyperpigmentation around my lip. Next shade is Pink Pout. Now this is a bright pink, which has a purple undertone to it. This will suit light to medium to tanner skin tones and it's not patchy. Next shade is Flamingo Pink. Flamingo Pink has more purple to it if we compare it with the last one. This is again more consistent in nature. It's not patchy and it is going to suit light, medium and tanner skin tones really well. Next we have Pink Crepe. Pink Crepe is a bit patchy so you will require a lip liner with this. Also it has a purple undertone which is more on the cooler side but definitely it will suit most skin tones out there it's just that i don't like that it is patchy next we have lilac galaxy lilac galaxy is also a purple tone shade but it is more on the cooler tone side it looks a bit ashy or gray i like the shade because it can cater to a lot of skin tones out there but it is patchy that's the only fact that i will not reach out to it in comparison with the rest of the shades which i'm liking in this range then we have purple berry purple berry is a purple shade which definitely doesn't have a gray undertone to it it doesn't look ashy or anything it's 
definitely something that i will reach out anytime i want to apply a purple shade it is not patchy in nature it will suit to a lot of skin tones out there so if you are planning to pick a bright purple shade you can definitely reach out to purple berry i will give you another option from the range but that one is tad bit if purple berry is uh, 20 that one is 19 okay in terms of the opacity next is lavender hues now this one looks like a dark lavender color which definitely has an element of wine color to it i enjoyed it so much because the formula of this one is even i don't have to apply that extra effort to build it up i just require two to three coats of it to get full opacity and it is not patchy it will suit to all skin tones out there of course on lighter skin tones it will look more dark if you are looking for a brighter version of purple berry the next shade is something that you can eye on which is orchid uh, fantasy now, this shade will appear more brighter but it is a tad bit but manageable patchy okay again this is more on the uh, cooler undertone side but it is not looking ashy at all it will cater to a lot of skin tones out there next shade is sangria blanca now this is a proper 90s grungy wine shade it is patchy you will require a lip liner with it and it takes a lot of effort to build this shade okay now the first red is pink blossom i know some of you guys must be like it's pink blossom but the shade is red but it stands out as a bright red more on the cool undertone side but looks so pretty and requires the minimal makeup effort next shade is deep coral now i do not like this one first of all this looks like an orangey red uh, it's more on the I would not say neony side but it is cool undertone in a sense wherein it makes my under eye area look dull I didn't enjoy it that much on my skin tone this will suit light to medium skin tones really well the next shade is rhubarb red I don't know the meaning of rhubarb I'll have to google that but this is how it looks like the shade difference between this and the next one which i'm going to show is not that much honestly it's a red shade which is definitely not warm so you will not have to do full face of makeup with this rhubarb red definitely has a pink undertone to it but it is not warmer in nature and which is why you can apply it with or without makeup that's the best part about this shade uh, but it does require a little effort to build it up to a full opacity kind of finish uh, it's not patchy next is smashing red now there is not much of a difference between rhubarb red and smashing red smashing red has a little bit more pink undertone to it but if you look it closely then only you can tell that difference otherwise there is like 18 20 difference between the both next we have wanderlust red this one has a little bit of maroonish and brown undertone to it but it appears like a nudish red i know it's a very off term how can a red be nude it can't uh, i think on deeper skin tones this can also work like a, an everyday shade as well and it is more on the neutral tone side it has pink undertone to it it's not warm in nature so you can again enjoy it with or without makeup this is tad bit patchy the last shade that i'm going to talk about is barn red now barn red is my favorite red from all the reds that are all i'm saying guys all all the reds available in this range because barn red has a berry undertone to it the formula of this one is the best if you're looking for a red which has a berry undertone to it which does not require any effort from your end you can wear it as it is then barn red is your shade now let's talk about my favorite shades from the lot first one is barn red then is the first shade that i swatched which was tawny wood and the last one which is my absolute favorite is lavender hue so if i have to recommend my top three shades these would be it 
Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to swatch, review and give you a wear test of newly launched L18 liquid lipsticks. Now, this is how the packaging of the product looks like. It did have a sticker, which I'm going to show you with another packaging. Here it goes. So it has a sticker like this in which all the details are mentioned, not the ingredients of the product. But what you can get is the manufacturing date, MRP and when is this expiring. Not just that, that detail is also mentioned here on the tube. So we have batch number MRP which is 120 rupees and also the expiry date because generally people just remove this sticker and they throw it away. I don't think anybody would keep this. Let's talk about the packaging of the product. Now the packaging of the product is exactly similar to last Acme Forever Matte Lip Color. Okay, there is like just the branding is different. The name of the L18 brand is here, like the logo is here, and the name is different. But other than that, even the quantity in each container is similar, which is 5.6 ml. Just that Lagme Forever Matte is not that affordable in comparison to L18. This is also affordable, but when we compare it with L18, it's not that affordable, okay? There is nothing fancy about the packaging of the product. It's simple, it's plasticky, and it's easy to carry. But there is something that I want to talk about, which is the tiny and minute manufacturing defects of each container. Let's talk about this one which I have just swatched. So can you see, I don't know if you guys can, but these are, these are manufacturing defects. At times I have also felt that some of these tubes have applicators which are a bit uh, scratchy in nature when you are applying it's not that smooth. I think company should have been a little more careful while making the applicators a little spongy because at times it feels like I am scratching my lips with those applicators. Some containers are fine, some containers do feel scratchy, less spongy. There is definitely that defect that I have just talked about. L18 in the past has definitely created products that were affordable and still the manufacturing was on point. The consistency of this formula is neither too creamy but it's definitely not a moussey formula. It is on the thinner liquidy side but not like L'Oreal's formula. Okay, so that is somewhere we are at. Very similar to Lacme Forever Matte but if Lacme Forever Matte takes uh, two or two, two and a half coats to get that full opacity, this takes at least three to three and a half coats to get that full opacity and you can say, okay, I have my lipstick on, I'm good to go. Then the formula of this lipstick, once it settles down, which it does in about 35 to 40 seconds, it gives a matte finish and it is also transfer proof. And here is the transfer proof test. It does not transfer. If you're going to have a very heavy meal, then definitely it's going to fade from the centers of your lips. Uh, but you can retouch with this easily since the formula is very thinner in consistency. It's easy to do a reapplication. So if I am having meals after every three hours, it has a capacity to last for four to five hours. Again, you can survive lighter snacks with this, but not a full-fledged meal, okay? Are these drying? Yes, they can feel drying if you are not prepping your lips. If you do, then you will not feel drying for about four and a half hours. After then, you will because it's already winter's hair. It does have a scent to it, which has like a bubblegum, strawberry kind of fragrance. So if you're not into fragrance products, you won't like it or you don't like strawberry flavor at all, then again, you won't like the smell of this formula. But definitely I feel that for 120 rupees and if you get an offer on L18, you are buying something that will last for at least an event. And if these minute manufacturing defects does not count for you, which is great then definitely I would say that this is a great formula for anybody who is looking for a makeup kit under 100 rupees or 150 rupees. That is it for today's video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys very, very soon.